eat, drink, and be merry. These are some of the great pleasures of life. Pleasures that COVID-19 can take away. If you've lost your sense of smell or experiencing a change in your normal sense of smell or taste, that can be a symptom of coronavirus, even where the other symptoms are not present. It's one of the strongest warning signs of the coronavirus and also one of its mysteries. Why do so many people lose their sense of taste and smell? This is DW's COVID-19 special. I'm Kate Ferguson. Thanks for joining me. Many people who catch COVID-19 report a loss of taste and smell. For some, it's one of a range of symptoms. For others, it's the only one. Scientists studying the phenomenon believe the sensory impairment could be caused by the virus attacking nerve cells in the nose, leading to questions about the disease's effect on the brain. Matthias Onkin is recovering from COVID-19. This is the first day he's ventured outside in nearly three weeks. He's eating again, but only because he knows he has to. When he was sick, he struggled with a cough, breathing difficulties and a high temperature. He also lost his sense of taste and smell and had no appetite. He's lost six kilos. I didn't feel like anything sweet or savory, nothing hearty. On day three, I realized I had no sense of smell. A Belgian study that looked at 417 COVID-19 patients showed that 86% of people with the disease lose their sense of smell and 88% lose their sense of taste. This is surprising since the disease doesn't actually cause a blocked nose the way colds do. A number of viral infections affect the nose and throat region and therefore the sense of smell. But with this new strain of coronavirus, this happens more frequently. Neurologists fear these symptoms occur because coronavirus attacks the nerve cells. The same phenomenon was observed with previous strains of coronavirus. With SARS, the earlier strain of coronavirus, close examination showed that it could affect the brain. Studies have shown that the virus can be that pervasive. So it's possible this new strain is too. Right now, we could be underestimating it. The cause of this sensory impairment could be a disturbance in the olfactory bulb. With SARS, 2002 animal experiments demonstrated that the virus progressed via nerve endings into the nasal mucous membrane and olfactory nerves and as far as the brain's olfactory bulb. The virus travels across the synapses from neuron to neuron. Nausea, extreme fatigue, a loss of taste and smell and headaches, all symptoms of COVID-19 that have a neurological explanation. Anka Manhart came down with COVID-19. She too had unexpected symptoms. She had no sense of taste and smell for several days. She couldn't even stand the thought of food she normally enjoys. It passed relatively quickly. I could smell coffee again quite soon. But then I began to hallucinate smells, as it were. And in the few first days, this was awful, because they were horrible smells. For a while, she thought she could smell seeping wounds, then smoke, and now and then frying bacon. This reaction is familiar to neurologists. It indicates that the brain is affected. We know from patients who've lost their sense of smell permanently that certain smells stored in the olfactory bulb can remerge, even if the smell isn't actually there. The good news is that for most people, loss of taste and smell from COVID-19 is likely to be temporary. Matthias Onkin says he's slowly getting better.
For more, I'm joined by Dr. Katrin Ola, a psychologist and researcher from the Institute of Neuroscience and Medicine at the Ulich Research Center in Germany. Dr. Ola, welcome along. Hi. Hi. You're part of an international group of scientists that have set up an online survey to collect data on how COVID-19 and other respiratory illnesses affect people's sense of taste and smell. What have you found out so far? So we have analyzed the data of the first 20,000 participants uh, that participated already within less than the first two weeks of the survey. And that showed pretty clearly that most patients who report um, that they have been diagnosed with COVID-19 um, have a massive loss of smell and taste abilities. So it's not just a uh, small reduction in their abilities to smell and taste, but it's really a loss uh, for most of them. So they can't taste and they can't smell anything. And uh, some quite, quite a few of the participants also lost their ability to experience um, other sensations like the spiciness of chili peppers, for example, in their mouth. Okay, so some really big effects there. Now, many people might be familiar with losing their sense of smell or taste, say when they have a blocked nose as part of a regular cold, but that's not what's happening with COVID-19, is it? Exactly, and, and that, that is a bit of a surprise because very often when we have a cold or the flu, our nose is blocked simply because it is swollen. So naturally we cannot smell. In that case, we can still taste because the tongue is not affected. Uh, we just think we cannot because uh, all the food uh, uh, fields blend to us uh, without uh, the smell. And uh, what we see in COVID-19, along with many of the other studies out there, is that very few patients report a blocked nose. So their nasal breathing seems to be just fine, yet they cannot smell. So that really indicates that here uh, they are not losing their sense of smell because simply the nose is stuffed, um, but that this is really affecting uh, the, the smell uh, physiology, the olfactory system here. Now, most of the time we take our sense of taste and smell for granted, and it's only when you lose it that you see how big a part of life it is. Tell me about the psychological impact of losing these senses in the long run. So what we know from a, from a large body of literature is that it affects um, many aspects of life. Um, as you say, we take it for granted. So when we cannot smell anymore, um, food becomes boring and uninteresting and, and very little appealing to us because all the aroma is missing. But it also affects social interactions. So people uh, are worried uh, that they may be smelling themselves. So mm -hmm. they are uh, uh, they're worried about body odors because they cannot check. Um, mm. And so they they avoid social contacts. And parents report they miss the smell of their family and their kids. And also people are scared because they may not be able to detect smoke anymore because, well, we do this uh, through our smell. And uh, so it affects many aspects. And on the psychological side, what has been observed is that people with uh, loss of smell and taste um, are more prone uh, to um, exhibit or to experience uh, depressive uh, disorders. Um, they are more likely to suffer from anxiety uh, disorders and social disorders. So, and typically what is observed that is that quality of life is affected dramatically. So it is reduced. So it affects all aspects of our life and uh, our psyche as well. So many things to think about. Dr. Ola, thanks so much for your insights. Sure. Time now to answer your questions about COVID-19. Over to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. The number of daily cases of COVID-19 has been steadily increasing, but the absolute number of daily deaths worldwide is going down. Why? These two statistics aren't, aren't as closely tied as they appear to be at first glance. Um, it's clear the number of confirmed daily cases globally 
will continue to rise at this point as our ability to detect infections quickly improves. Um, many, many more tests are now being conducted than, than even just a few weeks ago. So, so it's to be expected that many more people with mild cases uh, will also be counted. The number of deaths globally, on the other hand, peaked at the beginning of May, but has since dropped off somewhat. But, but that also means less than it seems to mean. Um, deaths have fallen in some places, like Europe, uh, not least because treatments are improving as doctors gain experience with the disease. But, but in other parts of the world, like Latin America, mortality is actually still on the rise. Um, the global mortality rate doesn't reveal key information like that. It, it just reflects a worldwide average. So it's a pretty blunt statistical instrument. Can you get COVID-19 again after having it once? We still don't really know. There have been cases where people who had the disease improved, then subsequently tested positive again. But, but that doesn't mean that they caught COVID-19 a second time. Um, they could simply still be shedding inactive viral genetic material from, from the initial infection, which, which can cause inaccurate test results. Um, as of right now, there's no clear-cut, scientifically proven case of someone being reinfected after having the virus once. Uh, the general assumption currently is that if you've had it, you should acquire at least some immune protection for at least a few months to a year. Um, after that, it's anyone's guess. What causes the blood clotting syndrome that's been seen? An estimated one in, in three patients, maybe more, develops potentially life-threatening blood clots in the lungs and, and other parts of the body as a symptom of COVID-19. And, and we still don't really know why, but, but experts are homing in on what are called endothelial cells. Um, they, they line the walls of blood vessels and they carry large numbers of the receptors the virus uses to enter the body. Um, we think the pathogen changes how these cells interact with, with blood that's been made somehow stickier by the virus. Um, hormones that regulate the clotting process are, are also possibly involved. Uh, studies and trials are ongoing. <laughs> 